you know, that, that song becomes an anthem, not only for those of us who are show tunes freaks and geeks, but I think it's kind of an anthem for almost anybody who steps into the ministry. <laughs> uh, just the words alone and have it sung so beautifully, Dashiell. Thank you so much. I didn't expect to get like off a of and <laughs> Not at the top of the service. And, and uh, he has another beautiful show tune he's going to sing at the end because it bookends the concept that I want to get across today. And I know that it's a big, it's a, it's a big song and I just figured I'd be fine. But uh, it, it just, the words alone and the beautiful rendition, you're now second to Richard Kiley in my book for that rendition. Uh, it just stirs up a whole bunch of stuff and it, it doesn't, you need, you need The reason that it does today is, it, interestingly enough, because it's on the heels of uh, last week, you know, with a, the wonder of our summer talent show and how we're moving forward into the, the uh, auspicious astrological sign of Leo, which is more than just subjective. You know, you, there is a perfect reason why little George chose to be born when he did, because he is going to be the errant king. And, you know, the heir apparent must be born in the sign of Leo. <sighs> but th that's that quality of creativity and you sing and speak to, uh, or Dale Wasserman does with his lyrics, the, the, the idea of what appears to be the impossible dream, which is not the case at all, as you know by the lyrics. And that brings me to today, <sighs> growing your field of dreams which is in conjunction with our movie today, as well as the close of this month's theme, which is grow with the flow. And for me, I have found myself in a very odd, oxymoronic space of restlessness and divine discontent and creativity. So that song speaks to that about dreaming those dreams and to see things that feel or to our human concept are impossible. But we know as metaphysicians, when you see the word impossible, you know it as I'm possible. I am that I am the strongest words ever written. So I am that I am, so I'm possible. Therefore, nothing is impossible to us when we know the infinite truth of who we are. And that song just, as I say, to me it's an anthem to that. I know it's been sung a lot, but if you really listen to it from a metaphysical ear, you will understand where that's going. And why that's coloring what I feel we're speaking about today, and notice I've not even opened my book. Okay, I know I had things I wanted to say. Uh, I'll start that, I'll find it, and um, I'll trust the flow. So I talked about the, the wonderful news with you know our talent show and the movie, and King, little King, well, soon to, someday King George, and then, then I did notice, I have to mention, that there was almost uh, challenging news when I heard or read that they were going to modify Monopoly and take away go to jail. <laughs> and that they're, ch they're changing Monopoly. Now, I know, I stand up here Sunday after Sunday and talk about change. I know that, <laughs> and I know that we need to be open at the top, and there are all kinds of changes. For example, a lot of our ministerial and, and lay people and practitioner colleagues are all at Pacific Grove this week for the summer camp, religious science summer camp, of a Asilomar, and we, we found out in the past two weeks from home office that this is the last Asilomar that religious scientists are going to do, and we've been there over 60 years since Ernest first found it. And so it has created a rift of emotions among all of us who have grown up on the, on the beautiful beaches, you know, at Monterey and Pacific Grove, and that's stirring it. And yet I know that we are poised for change, always. But taking away go to jail in Monopoly? I mean, really? Come on, where, where, where is the, the cause and effect? Where are the consequences? Then, <laughs> blessedly, so you know, I did find out last night, literally, at 7.23 p.m. in the Huffington Post, they were contacted by the senior brand, ma brand manager at Hasbro, Nicole Agnello, and she wanted to dispel all the dark rumors that, yes, the Monopoly Empire game, which I thought was already interesting, the Monopoly Empire game, isn't that kind of gilding the lily, that has a different game that now players will buy and sell brands instead of real estate. 
And yes, there are still jail spaces on the board and the same rules involving the classic game. So there was a little bit of a sh Then there was some good news. Unless you are domestic and like to iron, they, decide, they took a, a across the country poll of which little token gets to go away and what new token would you like. So they voted out the iron. And then um, the new little Scotty dog will now have equal rights competition. The animal kinship circle is happy to know that the new token is a kitty cat. <laughs> so we have a kitty cat. So we, uh, but I'm not sure I want to buy a new Monopoly game if they're going to change all the rest of it and I can't have Boardwalk, et cetera. And then j just I will find my own little kitty token and keep my iron. And... <laughs> I, what I thought was interesting, that the, although it was a national vote that got the little cat, that the press release about Hasbro and the new token came from Paw Tucket, Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> now, I probably no one caught that but me, but I just like Paw Tucket, Rhode Island. Okay, fine. So, so in the midst of all of this change, and for me, the angst of divine discontent, restlessness, and expanded creativity. It's a very odd path to walk when you're walking and you're feeling my impossible dream. Oh, wait till we do this. So that's what I feel like I'm doing this week. And it's this tightrope, but I do have balance in the eyes and mind of God of feeling the restlessness about dreams, either the little ones or the big ones or the ones that feel unrequited, and the creative ideas and options, particularly in regards to when I think about how we are growing this community and our field of dreams together as a spiritual community. So we move on with Grow with the Flow, and I'll start with Carl, Carl Jung's famous quote, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. And so perhaps what was sung about the impossible dream is that so many of us start to look at any of our dreams, our little ones or our big ones, as an outside thing, as something so external that not only do we have to achieve it in the world and perhaps gain the glory and fame of that, and we forget about the inside work that is required to make any of those dreams come true. We must awaken to that divinity that is within us in order to literally outpicture the dreams that we see. And now, in order to have that dream, um, by the way, I was inspired, you know, timeliness. We were preparing for the book sale, and so the bookstore team, we were in there looking at books and things we're going to... And in the midst of our lending library was Mary Manon Morrissey's book, Building Your Field of Dreams. It was like, I'm going to borrow that this week, and thank you very much. So it, it's from the lending library, so I can do that, and I signed out for it. And I, I thought it was great inspiration to, uh, for reminders, and I have a few of her quotes. So this book will be back in the library today if anyone wants to, to read it. And it's an idea that we talk about in religious science all the time, to build your field of dreams. And how do we do that? Well, those of us who've been in this a long time, or maybe you've never taken a class, in our foundational class, we talk about something really, really basic, seed, soil, plant. And that's our trinity. And that's exactly, I know you can't see it very well, but that's exactly what our symbol represents, is the idea of the seed, the creative idea, the first glimmers of what might be the impossible dream, moves into the creative law, into the mind that we are, and then out pictures as divine demonstration, as the effect, as the form, as the body. So it's this wonderful, the V comes into it, you get this great idea from spirit, you can, you can't, you're chomping, that's actually supposed to be champing at the bit, but we all know it is chomping, champing at the bit, and it comes, this idea of spirit comes into our creative mind, we saturate it, we let it just oh, it just sits in there and we get creative and we do our prayer work, we do all of that, and then it outpictures as the realized dream or goal. That's our creative process. The V comes down into that and comes back up and keeps going because nothing is static in life. We are open at the top and change, including monopoly, takes place. Yeah, is that weird? Aren't there the weirdest things? You can go with all kinds of changes and you go, oh, it, come on, it's progress, it's change. And then something like that, and I go, it's like, how dare they? 
Who? Nobody asked me. Did you get the memo on this? No. Weird, weird ch change. And so I asked that we look at and perhaps revisit our field of dreams. Both today, our individual field of dreams and our field of dreams for our community. And I think what happens, at least it happened, it does happen for me, is that when there's a dream or a goal, and let's say you have this dream or your goal and you're walking down the path of life and suddenly there's a <coughs> detour, viable, real, something that takes you off the path and you go, oh, dream, dream, I'll be back. N never fear, I will return. And then you keep going. <laughs> and then while you're going this way because of that viable detour, suddenly do 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 and you're heading back and you go, fooing another detour. And it's like, dream, dream, I'll remember, I remember, I remember. And then who knows, days, weeks, months, years, you're down that detoured path and the dream seems vague and distant. And then years go by and you think, oh yeah, what was it I wanted to do? Oh yeah. Or perhaps you see something in the real world that reminds you of that or you watch a film, something that inspires you and you go, oh, that's what I was going to do, going to do. That's what I dreamt of. And then it all feels as if it's behind you. I don't want that to be the case for anyone in this room. I don't care if you're 8 or 80. If there is a dream inside of you, we need to nurture it. We need to maybe, you know, buff up the seed a little bit, get the soil cleared out, pull out some old weeds of disbelief and negative thinking, and fertilize the creative law, the creative mind, plant that seed again, and let us nurture it together with you, for you, so that you may have a field of dreams. We are given these dreams for a reason. There is something within us that God wants to know of itself through each of us and could only be known by each of us. Even if that dream looks like someone else is already doing it. And boy, in today's world, <laughs> most everybody's doing it. The internet is an amazing, amazing creative field of dreams, is it not? I know that for me, when I was little, I had tons and tons of ideas and dreams and visions. And I used to keep a, a journal of these inventions and things that I wanted to do. And some of them actually outpictured, not with my help, but I must have tapped into the infinite mind somewhere around the country and the world. Someone else was crafting it and making it, and then it came true. But as a kid, for me, I was in a generation that kids didn't do things like that. Nowadays, kids transform the world. They have lemonade stands that, that raised thousands and thousands of dollars for research. They come up with new creative ideas and inventions, and we foster that, we espouse that. When I grew up, it was like, kids are supposed to be kids, you know, go play, go do something else. And I admit, it's not just race consciousness, I bought into it. When I would come with these ideas and dreams, someday I want to, and it would be kind of like, yes, dear, that's nice. And I go, oh, okay, that's right. I'm only a kid and a poor one at that, so you don't have the money for school and you can't do this and you can't invest in that, so never mind, never mind, never mind. So if that's the case for me, I don't doubt that there's an aspect of truth of that within many of you, on all of us, that somewhere along the line, a dream, whether kind of goofy and fun and quirky or big and transformational for the world, got squelched, got squelched buried over by race consciousness and belief, by detours along the way, the path, or by just our own reluctance and perhaps reticence and maybe a little bit of that F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, that who am I to want and be able to transform the world? Who am I to write the great next symphony novel or paint the next Mona Lisa? Who am I not to? But nobody taught me that. And I believe it's that quality that draws so many of us to a religious science center for spiritual living, to metaphysical teaching. Because we know innately who are we not to. And I know you all are familiar with Marianne Williamson's wonderful speech that Nelson Mandela usually gets credit for about the magnificence of who you are and that if you're not owning up to it, that actually that's more arrogant than trying to be your empowered, magnificent self. That would never have flown in my household. Don't you get too full of yourself, young lady. Ooh, okay. 
Fump, 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 fump. That was part of my story. Again, it may be part of yours. Hopefully it's not. And, and it's not for our younger generation. It doesn't have to be anymore. Because kids know innately, and we now foster as a community, or at least in consciousness and in intention, the divine idea that dream, think, possible, everything is possible. And golly gosh, who to thunk, it goes right back to the Bible. All things are possible with God. Really? Hmm. So what's that missing link, perhaps, for some of us? Some of us were taught that if you couldn't do it on your own, if you didn't have the smarts, the money, the time, the, the network or the connections, you didn't realize that part of what was missing, that you weren't taught, I wasn't taught, I don't mean you, one was not taught that by aligning with that infinite nature of God, that I am, all things are possible. It says so. And in some ways, it says so even on the Chico State motto above Kendall Hall, today decides tomorrow. I love that. When Donna and I first moved here, we were walking around the campus. It was really beautiful because it was almost autumn, so that meant it was really nice, you know, cool outside. And, and then we walk, and there's this big brick building. This, you know, I have a thing about brick buildings and school educational institutions anyway. And then today decides tomorrow. It's like, oh, that's metaphysical. That's like really cool. It's not just academic. It's metaphysical. Today decides tomorrow. Where your thoughts are decides the experience of where you will be tomorrow. In Mary Manon Morrissey's book, it's really fun to say Mary Manon Morrissey several times. In her book, she talks about a, a congregant that came to her, and she, the woman in her 40s, saying, you know, Mary, I, I really want to go back to school. I want to get a degree. I want to do something with my life, but I'm 42, and by the time I get out of school, I'll be 46. That's too old. And she responded back to her, well, that's four years, and where, how old will you be if you don't go to school in four years? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, I could have had a V8. That's right. So maybe 46 isn't a typical age to be graduating from college, but I'm still going to be 46. So why aren't I following my dream? Because of someone else's thought and theory and belief system and because it didn't happen before. So gosh, I'm not allowed to do that and I'm going to be 46. I walking down in that gown and stuff. People are going to notice. For some of you already know this if you read my blog. I went to a ballet class last week. Was I the oldest student in the room? Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> and I gulped, I breathed, and I leaped all the way because I wasn't going to let that stop me this time. Now, I had a dream. I, that was my dream, as, actually, as a kid, was to be a ballerina. I wanted to be a dancer more than anything in the world. But it goes to the story I already said, we didn't have money for lessons. So I didn't go after about two years. We couldn't afford it. So that dream pff, went out the window. You know, don't have the money. Uh, that, all the other reasons, you don't need to hear all that. Now, do I really think that I'm going to be a ballerina now? <laughs> I don't know. There's another talent show next year. Who knows? You know, some things your body remembers. No, I don't really think I'm going to be a ballerina. And I had to do it for me. That's part of that divine discontent restlessness I was talking about. That I, that was my dream. And it got squashed and detoured and blah, 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 blah. Been there, done that, told you. And yet, I went to ballet class. And who knows, I, I started tap. <laughs> And then they have this class, I'm really digressing, called girly hip hop. <laughs> I don't know what it, you know, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yes, Denise, yes. <clears throat> now, why I had the I, foolishness or, or courage to tell you all that, I do not know, but it's it came out, but I believe it's because of the idea is that that part of me was part of my dream. And because I didn't get to do it, 
throughout my life. It w did not become my profession. I'm now an adult of mature age that to think that it, it, the dream is null and void, can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. So I, I know that there's probably something similar to that for each of you, some little dream that you didn't do, it didn't become your avocation or your profession, and yet it's still there for you? It's still there? Well, I want us to find a way to live our dreams, to follow our dreams, and perhaps, who knows, come on, well, how old was Grandma Moses? 70, 80 something, when she became a famous, respected painter? So there is no one, at least not in this building, there is no one that's out there to say to you, you can't, you're too old, you're too young, you're too poor, you're too rich, you're too blonde, you're too tall, you're too any, what da, 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 da. whatever it is that you've been told or you tell yourself that you hear. Mm -mm. I want us to build our dreams. And I know that there are all kinds of things that stand in the way of that, and it's all right in here. It's right in here. It's that that Muzak tape that we play back in our head with all of the adults, all the media, anyone around us who says you can't, you shouldn't, are you crazy? What were you thinking? All of that that's in there. We need to rewire that and we know how to do it. Yeah, la 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 la, we are metaphysicians, oh that word, metaphysicians. Can you tell I get excited and I can't, Whew, slow down. There's the old adage that you teach what you need to know. So what I'm saying to you today, I'm trying to hear, and if not, I suppose I could try and listen, or watch the tape, or do something. I don't usually do that, it makes me very self-conscious, but if there are tapes running in your head that you can't and you shouldn't, or you won't, or you're too old, or you don't have enough money to fund your project. Oh man, see what I talk about the internet? You can fund your projects on the internet. You just need to go on the internet and say, I'm raising money for this. And you, you put up pictures and you explain your mission and your vision and people contribute to you. Yeah, you can do it. There's nothing that's keeping you from doing it except you have to erase the weeds of the old thinking in your mind. You need to redirect your thought every time you start to go to, ball you go to ballet class and it's like, you know, 15 minutes till and it's like, am I going to go now? Oh, no, I, well, maybe I shouldn't. All the stuff that comes up when you get ready to do something towards your dream or something that's been kind of dormant and you go, you, but you, I, maybe I, mm. oh, gee, ah, okay. You got to do it. You have to redirect your thinking. And we teach you how to do that here. We have a cadre of people who support you in knowing how to do that. And then Mary Manon Morrissey writes, the dream must be bigger than you know yourself to be so that you learn to allow the higher source to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Well, that's what I was talking about because as a kid, nobody said to me, okay, well, all right, honey, we may not have the, we can maybe not go to class, we can't afford that, or yeah, I, you, you don't have that education or whatever, but know with God, turn it over to God, pray about it. Do, nobody taught me that. We get to teach each other that. So you need to have a dream that's bigger than you, right even now. The you that has defined the dream is not the you that will exist once the dream itself has manifested. I need to say that again. Because what happens when we get stuck in our dream? We think about what we want to do. We think about that dream and that goal. And we think about it from where we are now. Maybe we are uh, out of shape or don't have the money or older or any of those things. And we think about the dream, we go, I don't think I can qualify. I don't think I can do it. But if you're thinking about that dream from that place where you are today, it's a misnomer. You need to think about because you're not going to be the same you as you walk the path of your dream. You begin to change. Einstein says you can't solve a problem at the level of the problem. Well, I want to say that you can't outpicture your dream from the level of the, hmm, what if? Because you need to be able to see it. You know when you walk, um, there are certain times when you're out in nature in the world and you look and you see that horizon perspective? 
and you see that point out there in the horizon and you keep walking towards it. And as you walk towards it, what happens? It doesn't stay the same. It becomes part of your landscape. It becomes part of your view. You become one with that and suddenly that horizon, we talk about the horizon, becomes our day-to-day life, our surroundings. So we need to do that. So the you that has defined the dream is not the you that will exist once it has manifested itself. The transition between these two states of expressions requires the, the lesser you to surrender to the greater you. The lesser you, the one that goes, oh, I don't know if I can or I should. Well, what if? And eh, maybe not. Oh, tomorrow. I don't know. That lesser you has to say, you have to say, oh, I understand. I understand why you might be afraid. I understand it might be hard. That's okay. That's okay. Why don't you sit over here for a little while and be, be still and quiet while God and I go out here and build your dream? <laughs> Oh, it's okay. So don't worry. Take a breath. Take a breath. And then let the pictures, let the ideas, let the thoughts start to come. And if the other thoughts start to come, and they will, or you'll happen to say to someone, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't even tell Don until like the day of, that, oh, I'm going to go take a ballet class that someone didn't say, you're going to do what? How old are you? What can you do? Nobody, I didn't have to have anybody say that. I had enough in my head saying it, and I had to dispel those voices. So chances are you will have those voices or some external voices saying, you got to be kidding, at your age. Or they already have 500 novels with that title. Whatever it is that's keeping you from it, you need to let that go. Let it be still. Understand with compatience that, oh, yes, there may be some resistance, some reluctance some fear, false evidence appearing real, fear. And your dream needs to be expressed through you as you. So how do you do that? You got to set an intention. And an intention is slightly different than a goal. I mean, everybody knows how to do goals and resolutions. We in a spiritual capacity and community know that setting an intention is defining what it is you want and putting your attention on it allowing it to be real and strong and viable. And we do that in many ways. You do it in meditation. You do it in visioning. You do it in your spiritual practice. Sometimes in classes we do vision boards where you cut out magazine pictures and you literally outpicture those things that you're trying to create or manifest in your life. Why is that? So that you're seeing those things that you want instead of seeing pictures that say you can't, you won't, you shouldn't. So we do that. So you need to set your intention. You need to revisit your dreams. You have to keep active with daily steps towards that in terms of your spiritual practice, in terms of quieting the doubting Thomas within thee. And we have those. To be able to say, yes, I know, that's very possible. And and then she talks about, there's one phrase, and it's probably the phrase I'm going to use for next week's talk because it was so potent to me. I couldn't do enough justice on today's Sunday. She has in her... Mary Manon Morrissey's book, the phrase, until now. Well, I, you know, I don't think I could be a ballerina. I don't think I can do that. I'm this, that, and the other. Maybe until now. Well, I really do want to sing and dance, and I want to study opera, and I've never sung a note in my life, and people tell me I'm tone deaf, and blah, 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 blah. Until now. Do you hear the difference of what takes place? It's not, in, not putting you in denial that, yeah, maybe you didn't do all that stuff and maybe you aren't musically inclined or, or, or it's not going to happen about cooking, honey. I just thought I'd t- say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> not happening. Not anywhere in my field. Until now? Until now? Yeah. How about now? <laughs> Those things that have called to you that you've justified not happening, give yourself a break. Cut yourself some slack and say, until now. And the one thing that will do immediately is we'll kind of create a gap. It'll freeze frame things so that you can really examine within yourself, is this still a viable dream for me? And then what may happen when you look at a viable dream, you may look at it and go, actually, it's not. 
I've been carrying this old photograph in my mind, this, this almost, uh, almost as a, um, an instrument of judgment, self-judgment, that I should have been this or done that. And now that I examine it from my higher self, from who I am as a metaphysical adult, that isn't really me. So you can take that dream and love it, bless it, and release it, let it go. And yet at the same time, there's probably another dream, just like chomp, you know, like a little jack-in-the-box, jumping up going, how about me, how about me, remember me, remember me? And you can go, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Oh, until now. Until now. So every time one of the doubting Thomases, the internal ones or the external ones, start to come forward to you, if you happen to be sharing your dream or being caught in, a, in your dream, then you can say to them, until now. Now is my time. And what do we teach as metaphysicians? Now is the only time there is. This is where God resides. Now. Well, and then now. And then now. So until now, oh, then that whole field of dreams opens up again. And how many of you have seen the movie Field of Dreams? Oh, well, now you get to see it again. <laughs> well, you know, besides the magic of baseball, the metaphysical qualities of baseball, the concept, the reason why this film is becoming a classic, the same way that you've got Wonderful Life or Wizard of Oz, is because it really speaks to us. And, and so when you go to see it, I'm not going to narrate during the film, but the guy who plays the first baseman, um, Gandal, Chuck Van Gandal, was, uh, is still a very dear friend of mine from the acting days in um, North Hollywood, Art Lafleur, and he came back after he filmed this. I, you know, nobody knew what the quality of the film was when he was making the movie. I didn't care, close your ears, Don, but Kevin Costner was in it, so I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Costner, baseball, ooh, does it get any better? It did, it got better because of the film itself. The message that Ray Kinsella wrote that was projected, that spoke to all of us. Denise said, if you screen it, he will come, they will come. And that, that line has become you know, part of our vernacular now, has it not? If you build it, he will come. Well, I don't wanna be a spoiler alert for that, what that really means for those of you who haven't seen the film, but as I was playing that phrase in my head this week, I had a whole new take on it. If you build it, he will come. Now, breathe. I'm not transforming in front of you. He, we have been taught, most of us, as childhood, he meaning God, equals God, capital H, he. And, of course, we teach in religious science, he, she, mother, father, God, it's all one. It isn't just a male entity. But from the old teachings and poetry and all of that, he often referred to as, meant God. Well, if you build it, God will come. What that meant to me today was if I, me, take the time to build my intention and understand it, then the God within me will come to assist me because, as I said earlier, with God all things are possible. So if you build it, he will come. But you got to build it first. Perhaps you got to pull out the out of the attic, that trunk that's got the, the dreams in there and maybe dust it off. But then you have to build it. You have to nurture it. You have to put the pictures on it. You have to, you have to dimensionalize it with smells and sounds and music and, and visualizations and things that you, you have to build it to make it the creative vessel by which spirit moves through you to help you make your dreams come true. If you build it, if I build it, if one builds it, then it will come. It, capital I, representing the infinite idea of God. So if you think about that today as you watch the story, in addition to the, the rich storyline on its own, and how this Iowa farmer, and now, psh, that farm in Dubuque, Iowa, buku bucks, people come and visit it. They want to be a part of that. It's kind of like the house in A Christmas Story is actually the house now where it is in Indiana is a museum and people want to come and be where that movie was filmed so they get a feel of that. People go to that baseball diamond in Iowa because they want that. They viscerally want that magic that was presented by the movie. 
but we know how to generate that magic and where it comes from. That magic came from the initial inspiration of Ray Kinsella's idea of building it in his head, in his heart, in his soul. And they came, we came, to see that, to know that. That's what our dreams are about. So if you have a little dream, an old dream, big dream, next month on August 28th, a month from today, will be the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. 50 years. Now, that was a pretty big dream. And I think that it might be nice for this month, this, this time of remembrance and recognition of that, that we pay attention to our dreams. Because I bet you have a dream. I know you have a dream. And I want to do as much as I can from within this community and all of the resources I have to support you in knowing that dream, building that dream, and outpicturing that dream. <sighs> the field is ready. The seed is good. Your life is willing. Plant, my friend. Your harvest is assured. Let's pray. So as we get centered, we take a moment. I'm going to do a little itty-bitty process before the actual spiritual mind treatment. And I will quote Thoreau in the famous known quote, if one advances confidently in the direction of his or her dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. He will put some things behind, will pass an invisible boundary, new, universal, and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within him. Or the old laws will be expanded and interpreted in his favor in a more liberal sense, and he will live with the license of a higher order of being. If one advances confidently in the direction of his or her dream, so for a moment, take a breath and let your infinite wisdom rest upon a dream of yours. Past or current, just let it come to the forefront. And as you breathe, permission to let that dream surface for you. Begin to notice the feelings or the thoughts and the dialogue that happen when you identify that dream. And if some of those thoughts sound like dialogue and doubting Thomases and oh, all that stuff, a reason why you shouldn't and couldn't and didn't, breathe in. Hold the dream in the forefront of your mind and inside with me just affirm, until now. And then take the dream as if it, it were delicate crystal and on a platter, give it over to spirit. Turn it over to the infinite mind. Set the intention that you will work towards this dream in consciousness first and then whatever steps in the external world and that you give it over to the infinite wisdom and creative power within you to make it happen. And then, as if you had a dandelion with those sweet little delicate flowers in front of you, hold that dandelion of your dream and then whoosh, and let it go. Turn it over. Release it. And breathe back into this present moment. This moment of now. The most powerful time that is the only time that is. And just breathe and relax into it and know that the work has begun. And that there is only the one mind, the one life of God, and that happens to be your mind, my mind, our mind, our life. 
And we come together in this community building a field of dreams that will look like a carpet of wildflowers of color and possibility and smells and sights and sounds. And it will be beautiful because it is so now. And the seeds that each of us plant are already nurtured by that infinite wisdom and the pure, clear waters of truth. And then we hold it up to the light, capital L, light, the way one would a plant to the sunlight, so that it may grow and nurture. And should we see any bitty witty weeds, we pull them out with love and patience. And we nurture again. And we look to the horizon to see that dream as ours. And we keep walking. And I know and affirm that whatever each of us needs on that journey while we're walking our dream path, we will get support, prayer, cool water, new ideas that add to it, the information we need, the breath, and the courage to do it. Oh, how good it is to know all that, to affirm that, to begin to play in the field of dreams once again, and now to just take it all and be so grateful, so glad, so enthusiated that we just whew, release it over to spirit so that the work can happen as it does happen, and it can only happen to us, through us. And then we breathe again in confidence and in gratitude. Oh, we release it. And please join me together as we say, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. Amen.